know what you're talking about. Anyway, the United States of America. They did it wrong on purpose as a joke. <laughs> that would almost be more comforting. If it was a joke instead of malicious. <laughs> instead of extremely insidious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sabotage, just in case this exact situation happened, or every day. It's it's funny. I can't I can't hear someone say like, oh, I get it without thinking of the one fucking Futurama joke. <laughs> where they're doing the iPhone parody and they're like, now the woman who momopolized the phone industry and Fry goes, I get it. Mom <laughs> And then Fry says Oh, now I get it. <laughs> it's such a good joke. <laughs> just like every single like time. Just trying to save face that first time. I yep, guess. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just like every time they're like, um, it's Olympus Mons, the tallest mountain in the solar system. Where? Oh, oh. <laughs> Probably is delightfully stupid. Uh, there's a Glavinus in here. It's five. The weird with like the three tier. Did I clip the ever loving shit out of my mic when I did my fry thing? Uh, no. Okay. It, I don't think so. My, in, my, right. in my monitor, it sounded fairly clipped. I forget what I was listening to the other day. Not the other day. It was probably like a month or two ago. But I was just like, holy shit like the compression or like uh, uh oh, oh hey, I, st I still like oh. this oh I, I literally really? thought that was someone dropping or something <laughs> wow hello still exists fine we're killing some glavinous if you want to take care of some like you know village requests <laughs> that sounds great haven't uh, haven't seen you on Monster Hunter that much. I I would know. I've been playing <laughs> Animal Crossing forty hours a week. <laughs> well, that truly terrifies me too. <laughs> it's not like we have anything else to do. You're not wrong, and that still scares me. <laughs> uh, what I've been doing is I watched the first two seasons of Community in uh, one day apiece. Uh, and then today I watched all of book two of Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's the book I've seen the most, so like... Really? Yeah, I've seen that book by far the most, and so like... I, I, I'm kind of tired of seeing it, you know, but it's like the kind of the best one. It's really good. I forgot how much of a fucking asshole Toph is to start. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Toph oh. really... It really sucks at the beginning. I mean, I get why. She's a spoiled rich then, kid who doesn't get what she wants. And then Katara really sucks at the end, so everyone gets what they want. <laughs> she should have been with Zuko. I mean, yeah. But that's actually but, true. My, <laughs> my Zuko ship is that one girl in Ba Sing Se who asks him on a date. Oh, Actually, yeah, right. I shipped him too. That, that little episode was cute. Yeah. Stop using the term. That ship. that that was That's unironic. You all. Anyway, uh, is Uncle Iroh just like one of the best characters in media history? Oh yeah, hundred percent. He's pretty fantastic. He's so good. He oh, is really good. Did you catch the one episode in season two that they yep. reported after his voice actor passed away? Yep. Or the the literal one scene in one episode of season two. Yeah, that entire episode was like uh, so and so's story or something, and his was. Yeah. That's uh, like a classic episode. Yeah. Is that the one where they're all doing like little like vignettes? Yeah. It's called like Tales of Bossing Say or something. Yeah. Right? yeah. Actually, yeah. I think that might be the one where Zuko's date is. In. Yeah, that is oh, the, yeah. that episode. That, that might be the best episode. That I, yeah. That or Zuko Alone. Zuko Alone is also a fantastic episode. Yeah. It's quite a good show. It is, it and is. I'll probably finally watch all of Korra afterwards. 
I've got yeah, I've got fucking time. What is that on? Core, core only gets better. Um, what it's on is my friend from high school's Google Drive server with a lot of media on it. I wonder how that got there. <laughs> well, maintain plausible deniability on that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, I was, dude owns a lot of DVDs. Time, anyway, or there's probably it's probably on like some Nick streaming service or something. And you can get it through like Amazon, like. Oh, it like, used to be on Hulu. Yeah, I thought it used to be on Prime. I I think I it used I, to be. I think it's a. Yeah, I think it used to be. I think right now it's a they premium get, channel. Get like a month free. Nickelodeon literally fucking hates like one of their most beloved media franchises. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I've heard I the Dragon Prince excited. is good and by the same showrunners. Uh, Dragon Prince is quite good. I've watched all yeah. of it. Haley loves Dragon Prince. I, I obviously have hangups about the animation, but like, yeah, I, I've yeah. heard almost nothing but good things about it other than. Um, yeah, I don't, I guess I don't notice animation that much. There's some stuff that looks really cool in it. I mean, you notice that it's not 2D, though, I assume. Oh, yeah, that's true. Now that you have said that, it does. it's not hand-drawn, is it? <laughs> no, not even a little bit. Um, I think it still looks good. It's just not hand-drawn. I think it's, it's just in that weird space where it's not hand drawn and they would really like you to think it is. Yeah. Which, it I've is never... in a little bit of an uncanny valley. It's it, true. It doesn't it doesn't take advantage of its like of what you can do with computer animation in the way that like Studio Trigger can... does. Yeah. Cuz you can do 3D like anime style shows and it looked just fine as <laughs> long as you like not pretending that it's a 2D cell drawn show. Was Spider-Verse a 3D computer animated? Yeah, entirely. Yeah, like, yeah, so you can obviously do some great stuff with it, but... Right, and I mean... You have to, like, want to do great stuff with it and have the money. There are, like, at least, uh, three anime now <laughs> that don't look like shit and are all CG. Spaghetti Head Booty Chronicles was one of the best for a while. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say it looked the best, but it was a surprisingly good anime. <laughs> Especially considering the, you know, main character. Right. Well, the, the design. I would propose to you fools also that uh, we jackbox when you're done with whatever you're hunting, because I just don't really feel like getting on Monster Hunter. You've <laughs> never really once awkward. felt like getting on Monster Hunter? Yeah, I'm not opposed to jackboxing if it's if you guys are for it. I can back a jocks. <sighs> You had to say it like that. Yeah, there's been a lot of that going around. Yeah, Chris, that first one today was so bad. <laughs> yeah? Same thing, but... The, just, like, it was, it like, was fine until <laughs> Ticket to Ride. <laughs> Ticket yeah. to Ride was the one that I loved. Which Ticket, Ticket to Ride got very, like, three-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> also, everyone, I would like to tell you the one and only one reason that fucking Christopher Cranston likes community. Here is the sole reason. It's not be just oh. because of the bare naked lady scene. Yes, it is. It is not. I think that it is actually just an incredibly well-crafted piece of comedy television. It's all, there is one scene where it is like a far too long scene where literally everybody in the group but the main guy defends the bare naked ladies just like way too much fundamental my twitter header might be donald glover saying the bare naked ladies are triple platinum are you it is not it is now a russian flag oh yeah um uh, no i will say i like community um oh had you never seen but, it no i had um uh, i'm watching it kind of in the background right now and it's like sometimes like actively um, I find it to be very, like, solidly good. Um, I know, like, Campbell loves it, and Chris love it, and loves it, and I know why, because you guys both like weird break the fourth wall meta shit. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, 
I think Abed is like one of the very few characters who does that well. Because yeah, in, the, in some ways, it, it just gets very disjointed at times because of there we're gonna do this episode okay. now episodes. I mean, those were also the best episodes of Psych, though. Like, the, like we're, we're, cause it's not meta; it's a parody. Well, but some of them are just it's, meta. It's a meta parody. Sure. Yeah, some, some of them are just flat out meta. And yeah. Abed sometimes pointing out, like, now we're gonna do this thing, and then they just do it. It's like, well, uh, all right. <laughs> um, so that's my only like minor gripe with it, and then it gets a little sitcommy at times. Sure, those it are. Always look a little more sitcommy to me than I don't know the comedies I generally have tended to like. Yeah, like, like there are moments in Psych where Sean is meta, but they're woven in into a way where it's obviously that, but it in no way disrupts the story, and the story still exists. Some episodes are just oh, it's being episode or uh, meta this episode. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> fucking episode where he makes a movie called Abed about him being Jesus who's making a movie about him being Jesus making a movie? Yeah, that, 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 one's, one's, that one's out that there. That one's weird as fuck. I have to say though the Law and Order episode is one of the best episodes of television. <laughs> Which one is that? The one where they fucking investigate who smashed their yam. Oh, I, I haven't seen that. Is that in season? That must be in season three. And they and they just do an entire parody of Law and Order where they constantly remind people that they are not the real police. <laughs> I I like in season two, like the clip, the fake clip show episode is so fucking smart. I think on a conceptual level, because like normally sitcoms, if they do a clip show, it is so under budget. It's the cheapest thing. They threw it together, and it is the single like most expensive episode of that show because there are like so many sets that they go to and so many different costumes, and like every single yeah. one is like, oh, remember when we did this? And it cuts to something insane that was never once in the show. Right. <laughs> I, do, I do like that one, too. They, they do play on tropes pretty well, but they, that is the whole show also. Yeah. So you kind of have to be in a mood for it. Like, uh, there isn't a lot of, like, they're willing to go wherever for whatever silly joke they're doing at that moment. Yeah, they did an episode of them playing Dungeons & Dragons, and it's, like, heartfelt. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, episode. they do like it to episode. help a random side character who has depression and says he's going to kill himself. Yeah. And, like, they don't like play it for episode. laughs. It's just good. Yeah, I enjoyed that episode quite a bit. Have you got the episode where they do the uh, conspiracy theories? That is the single best episode yes. of comedy television. Yeah, um, that, I, I think it's the best community episode. I will admit I haven't watched like every episode, but like I've seen a lot of it. A lot of the, the first couple seasons. I, I anyway. did like the conspiracy. I think that's been my favorite episode. <laughs> wow, Jeff. <laughs> wow, Jeff. I thought you were just making that up. Yeah, here's the thing. I've never seen that guy before in my life. What? I don't know. What? I don't know! <laughs> Just the, the the three layers of, like, fake guns that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Would that this hoodie were a time hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of good stuff. And I like the show overall. Um, and what's the, what's the, oh, and the B-plot is the fucking uh, blanket fort. Oh yeah, yeah. Blanket Fort is a lot of fun. They have a, a chase scene through the Turkish district. <laughs> yeah, the Blanket Fort's pretty fucking funny. Like, one of the main reasons I want Donald Glover to go back to, like, doing comedy again is because, like, the chemistry between him and Danny Pudi is so fucking good. It, it is quite good. I'm going to, like, watch uh, the DuckTales reboot just because I like Ben Schwartz and Danny Pudi, and they're, like, two of the main characters. Yeah. Interesting. Also, I think Sam Regal um, does the voice direction. George is a parody of himself. That makes me respect him slightly more. It, but, like, is it a parody, or did, just, did Chevy Chase just show up on set? <laughs> You know, you can never really tell, and that's what's kind of great about it. Uh, he, uh, 
drove a lot of people insane near the end of his time on that show. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. because he's an asshole. Yeah, and Dan Harmon also, like, Dan Harmon, I think a good person, but undeniably a big asshole. Like, yeah. I don't think he's a bad guy, but... He's, his heart's in the right place, but he... Who's uh... Dan Harmon? Is he the creator? Yeah, creator, right. director. Yeah. Okay. He also, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Oh, okay. That actually makes a lot of sense now that I've seen some of each of those shows. Mm hmm. Yeah. Nice. Jesus Christ. I think my Wi Fi is bad again. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it. My it wife. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think my wife is bad again. Please take my wife. Oh, the Halloween episode is also, I think, another perfect episode of television. Is that the, the oh, zombies? Zombie one? Yes. Yeah, and like, <laughs> I I say this all the time, and it has never once been picked up on. But when it's Troy, Abin, and Jeff in the basement, and there's the cat flying around, and Jeff's like, "We have to figure out what's going on with this." And the other two are like, "Uh, Jeff, there's a bigger problem." And he's like, "This cat has to be dealt with." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, don't talk to me about zombies. This cat's fucked up. <laughs> Do you guys think that uh, this whole pandemic will be like finally the death of like the zombie genre? I hope. No. But I oh, be. God, no, it's gonna like make seventy thousand more zombies. Yeah, things. no, it's going to be a renaissance. Because um, like, like nine eleven kind of ended the disaster. So can this please end zombies? <laughs> Just no. For no. However, I do think it is going to be the single most world-changing event since 9/11. I also like, think that. Yeah. Like I lasting changes. Yeah. Honestly, I think it, it. We'll see how long it lasts and how far-reaching it is. But I think it could have like even like more wide-reaching changes than 9/11. Yeah, well, I just, I, I think it's going to be the first thing since 9-11 where there are some things we go and do and say, hey, remember how this was before Corona? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, we're like, going to gonna pivot to stuff. Jackbox? Yeah, all right. Okay. Like, there's going to be a lot of stuff where you just, like, can't do it in person anymore. Right and stuff and you're gonna be like hey i remember when we used to be able to do this in person like like i, I, I bet every doctor visit now is gonna be like a web consultation first well it was going that way anyway it, it was but I, I, yeah i just think so much of the world is gonna stay remote because of i this. remember stores that sold physical media <laughs> no you don't tim <laughs> hey remember when you used to go to the grocery store like three times a week and now you go like once a month i mean i always went once a month so well that's... yeah i mean it's just like <laughs> i would go to the grocery store like at least like twice a week and oh, sometimes really? i just yeah like, like i tried to like get most of the stuff i needed for a week but then like i usually end up needing like some random thing so i'd stop there on my way home from school or whatever oh. or it's just like oh i really want chips and i'm out of chips i'm gonna grab some yeah. chips on the way home yeah I, I like filling up over the course of a week so i know never have one giant trip because that's just a hassle yeah i tried to do one big trip and then i do like what uh, also like, also like you know grocery stores are extremely accessible for me yeah i have 30 within walking distance right. i mean yeah. part of it is that really was a giant trips kind of dude and so i moved here where costco is by far the cheapest option Mm. And so, Connor and I just do like one big Costco trip every like three weeks. Yeah, and like for me, like there's a there's a grocery store like on my commute, so like it's not a big deal to just stop in. Or well, commute. What is a commute in the before times? <laughs> yeah, I, I love I'm, uh... just to like preface everything about is this from the before times yep because <laughs> we have, like they can't answer it the same way anymore yeah it's like they get a question about workplaces or whatever i have i'll say i have 
I've been relatively satisfied with my kids' engagement and my distance learning. This is the first week we were doing it full on. That's good. And They're like, probably bored as my... shit. Yeah. Yeah. Really. It's not yeah. Even, like, it's like, not my, even uh, like my third period, I had like 24 out of 32 that answered my question of the week and another like 18 that did my journaling and shit and turned it in. Like, that is significantly more than I thought I would get out of middle school. <laughs> mm -hmm. That aren't being great. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if their parents, I mean, like... Their parents have to have a dedicated, hey, go do work, you shit please fuck. go do something, yeah. <laughs> go do this thing. Your teacher said you, you might, you kind of should do it, I guess, maybe, if you want, but I'm going to make you do it, please. <laughs> I, I need to focus on actually doing my job. <laughs> yeah, um, no, that's definitely true. My, like, my kids that have a lot of support at home, or their parents are forcing them to do it, which is good. That's what they should. Right. 